Hello everyone, welcome to Life Around Science. This video is about physics of lightning. We will see how exactly a lightning occurs and what, is the, what are the processes involved. The idea of this video was sparked by the previous two videos where we saw lightning and types of lightning. And I searched uh, online to see how lightning works, but no, none of the videos give a complete description of the entire process of lightning. So here I try to address this question in one video which completely answers the physics of lightning. So let's start. Did you know that there are around 400,000 thunderstorms per day on earth on an average and 100 lightnings per second. So as I'm speaking every second there are about 100 lightnings that are occurring somewhere on the earth. So let us try to understand this process. So, let us draw a cloud and let's say this is our ground. So let's get some idea about the dimensions of these structures. So a cloud can be at a height of 1 to 4 kilometers. The height of the cloud itself can be around 2 to 10 kilometers. And talking about the width, it could be about 5 to 8 kilometers. So this is the earth, as you go above in altitude, the pressure goes on decreasing and the density of air molecules goes on decreasing and so does the temperature if you use the law of PV equal to MRT, the ideal gas law, say. So the temperatures in the uh, altitude 1 to 4 kilometers above can be about minus 10 or minus 20 degrees Celsius. This is quite small. So what happens is the water droplets from the seas and lakes, they vaporize they go up and as they enter the clouds they experience really low temperatures and they form water droplets or uh, blocks of ice as they freeze and condense in such low temperatures so the main process for or the reason behind lightning is something that happens inside the cloud and it is basically separation of charge the cloud in itself is neutral but uh, because of various complicated processes uh, negative charge comes at the bottom of the cloud and positive charge goes at the top. So the process by this charge separation occurs is very complicated and is still an area of research. But one of the argument is the water vapors come, come up, they, they start rising as they enter the clouds. There are already these dust particles and ice uh, blocks inside the cloud. And the atmosphere inside the cloud is very violent. There's a lot of current winds going on inside the cloud. And because of the friction, as these drop uh, water vapors rise up, they collide with these uh, particles and static friction gets created. So they lose their electrons and as they go up, electrons stay behind and the positive charge goes up. So this figure is not to scale, obviously, because it's 1 to 4 kilometers, this is 5 to 8 kilometers. So this is much less and this is huge. So a large amount of charge gets accumulated. So what happens as a result of this, Earth, which we will consider neutral for all practical purposes, positive charges get induced below this cloud. So this cloud with these packet of cloud with these water vapor and uh, ice uh, particles is what we call as the thunderstorm cloud. So this thunderstorm cloud attracts positive charge just below it. By the way, fun fact, the earth is not exactly neutral. It actually has a net negative charge and it's in another topic of discussion, but we'll consider it neutral for our practical purposes. So anything that we have, on the ground, say a tree, a house, or these metal spikes which people install to prevent themselves from thunder, these all will be full of positive charge. This can be proven using basic electrostatics, so such pointy objects will gather more positive charge. This is just the induced charge from the ground. Also if you are alone in a huge ground, then the charge that is induced will be more on you because you are the most pointy person there and you are most likely to attract the lightning towards yourself. So clearly given this charge distribution, we would expect electric light going from ground to the cloud in an upward fashion. So this is there all over the place. So this is just from going from positive to negative. So for a lightning to occur, how much charge should accumulate here? So we know that this is atmosphere and it is not really good conductor of electricity. So we cannot have a current flowing from cloud to ground just like that. We need an electric breakdown of this atmosphere for a current to flow. Electric breakdown is basically uh, when you have an atom with a positive 
charge and say an electron and you apply an electric field so the charges get separated and if the field is strong enough the electron gets ion, the atom gets ionized that is electron becomes free and gets and these charges are free of their own and this is what we call ionization or the plasma state which is perfectly conducting so if you look up in google the electric breakdown uh, value of air is around 3 megavolt per meter so we have this basic equation that so if we consider that this is exactly uh, a uniform field which is electric field which it is not but let's do it for the sake of calculation so change in potential is electric field into distance so and the distance is about one kilometer so delta v would be around 3 into 10 to 9 volts so that that is how much potential difference is there between the cloud and the uh, ground but this value of uh, breakdown electric field is for is calculated or uh, found out using lab instruments where the discharge is somewhere around plates uh, which are one meter apart but here we have a huge distance and huge distance means there are more molecules and since it is a probabilistic event more molecules means a higher probability of breakdown so if you have a larger gap then the actual electric field which is required for breakdown which would be less than what we see in lab so actually it is about 10 orders of magnitude less so actual breakdown field needed is around 10 raised to 5 volts per meter in our case and hence the potential difference is typically around 20 to 100 megavolts so if this ground is at 0 volt this is as minus 20 to 100 megavolts somewhere around that so let us find out how much charge is there in this cloud so we know if we consider this as a plate um, we can use electric field is sigma by epsilon naught and which implies charge is electric field strength just outside it into epsilon naught into area so electric field strength we can turn at 10 raised to 5 this is around 10 raised to minus 12 area is basically area of this uh, cloud which would be 5 kilometers square and if we do it it comes around tens of coulombs so tens of coulombs is a huge coulomb itself is a huge unit of charge tens of coulombs is a huge amount of charge for this entire cloud so that is how much charge is there in the cloud during a thunderstorm this is just an order of magnitude calculation 10 coulomb to be 10 50 coulombs so basically in order orders of 10 so now that we have such a huge charge and a huge electric field enough to uh, initiate a breakdown of air the air just below the cloud gets ionized because of this breakdown process so i'll this green part wherever i draw the green, green part it is basically ionized air when the charges are separated and this is what we call as plasma state it is a perfectly conducting state so now we have these electrons which uh, and this perfectly conducting state uh, along with so they go on doing brownian motion and also because of the electric field they are accelerating downwards so they come down so as they come down being very high high in charge density they have higher electric field in the surrounding of them so they cause dielectric breakdown of the air that is surrounding them also just like in uh, zina diode we have two processes one is the breakdown process and the other is avalanche process so as these electrons are being accelerated by this electric field they gain high kinetic energy and they collide on other atoms which are below them or molecules which are below them and make them ionize and thus this plasma state goes on increasing so it might go here <laughs> then it might ionize a few molecules here then it might travel there also over here and it goes on it like a brownian motion in downward direction because of the electric field wherever it goes uh, gets more and more ions and creates plasma states and this is how it travels downwards note that this green part is basically plasma the conducting state this all of this part is still an insulator with electrons that are being accelerated downwards because of this electric field well we should expect the same thing to happen from these positive charges also so they start on their own these positive charges if it is the density is high enough it might cause a breakdown of the air around it and it can start traveling up ionizing air as it finds path note that this is not must but in this does happen in some cases this is called as upward streamer this is not a must in lightning the process can go without this also the charge density being much less on the ground as compared to the clouds this travels it is, does not travel much effort it is only in meters whereas this comes till the ground so it travels kilometers so basically we have this plasma coming down through dielectric breakdown as well as avalanche effect this is called a stepped leader because it goes in steps it 
the charges go down then uh, they ionize the air around it then they travel further then they again ionize and then they, they can break down into fractal structure as we can see uh, in the sky note that although i'm drawing them very slowly the speed at which this is coming down is of the order of 10 raised to 5 meters per second and so this is only around 1 kilometer so you can tell that it, it reaches the ground in somewhere around 1 millisecond or so so i'm drawing in time scale of milliseconds actually the current that it is carrying with itself is of the order of 100 amperes as it is going down um, so which is a lot but you will soon find that this is not much at all this process continues until the step leader and the upward streamer join each other or the step leader actually reaches the ground itself So this is so this process carries a charge of around 0.5 coulombs from the sky, uh, that is the clouds, to the ground, which we know is not much because the charge is in the order of tens of uh, tens of coulombs. So this does not actually carry much charge. This first process is called as the step leader process. So is this the lightning we see in the sky? Yeah. Well, not quite right. Once this connection has been made, we have a complete channel from the ground to the cloud or from here, which is completely in plasma state, that is, which is completely a conducting channel. So it has no resistance. So the situation that we have now is that we have C2 plates, and we have a conducting channel which has almost zero resistance, and we have a potential difference of, you know, like of the order of megavolts. So you can imagine how much current would be passing. And this current is now of the order of 10 to 100 thousand amperes and it goes on for a period like five milliseconds or so which if you do current into time it discharges of about five coulombs of charge from the cloud to the ground and this is the main part of the lightning uh, because you can see power is basically given by voltage into current and the current is of the order of hundreds of kilo kilo amperes and voltage is of megawatt so how much power is generated so this is exactly where the heating of air occurs when this much power is given out by this discharge heating of air occurs and as te temperature goes up the pressure increases again by pvnrt and this sets out a shock wave uh, in this uh, air around it which travels to distance and we hear it as thunder the power is as strong as 10 to 5 and 10 to 6 which is 10 to 11 watts just as I, as this and this is the major lightning action that we see actually this is where the light is generated and the thunder is created this this is what we call as actually return stroke and this stroke travels at a speed of almost 10 to 20 percent of the speed of light because you have complete plasma and you have a huge potential difference a huge current and hence such high velocity so what happens is this charges that were there uh, in the cloud they go through this channel first then this process so it takes about five milliseconds or so then the next charge come here and then they again discharge through the same channel which has already been created now so this process so this is called a second return stroke and this process goes on like 5 to 10 times or even 15 times so and they are they can be about 20 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds apart and so this now we can see that it amounts for the total charge of the cloud because each of them are discharges about 5 kilohms or so so after 10 such return strokes the process stops and all of this happens in about one tenth of a second and all of these return strokes give out lightning and thunder which you see as one lightning streak in the sky or fractal structure or one sound so there are actually tens or fifteens of such return strokes which we see as one lightning so we have one st step leader for one millisecond or so then it is followed by a return stroke which goes on around five milliseconds then after about 20 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds the return strokes repeat and this goes on for 10 or 15 times so we get about 100 milliseconds of lightning which we see as one lightning so then after these multiple return strokes a major amount of this charge on the cloud has gone to the ground now and the electric field strength has decreased and so this process stops then you have to wait for another few seconds for this cloud to again rebuild these negative charges and so this process again a step leader will be created it will find its path once the path is created 
multiple return strokes will take place and you'll get a huge lightning. Where do these positive charges go? Well, they go up in the atmosphere, uh, in the upper layer of the atmosphere, which is already at a greater potential than the ground, which is another topic in itself. So this is the process of lightning. There are much more details that I can actually go into, but for the brevity of the video, I stop here. If there are any specific questions, you can comment below because there is much more to this than what I've covered here. But the video is getting long. So this is overall what happens when a lightning, like what goes behind a lightning that we see in the sky. So that's it for today. Thank you.